Change leadership is often held up as a kind of special situation for leaders. However, transformational leadership is predicated upon the idea that people and organisations are constantly transforming. So why do we need to look beyond this model of leadership in terms of organisational change? Perhaps one explanation is that the modern economy has seen the need for large-scale organisational change like never before, with business re-engineering, mergers and acquisitions and downsizing becoming commonplace and representing seismic change rather than incremental change. Additionally, the rate of success of large-scale change has been less than stellar and the negative effects of unsuccessful changes, such as wasted resources, burned out employees, scared and frustrated employees, point to the need for a focus upon certain leadership skills that can be applied in these situations. Research by Harold, Fedor, Caldwell and Liu may have also uncovered another clue. In their study, transformational leadership was found to be more strongly related to followers' change commitment than change-specific practices, especially when the change had significant personal impact. However, for leaders who were not viewed as transformational, good change management practices were found to be associated with higher levels of change commitment. This would indicate that transformational leadership capabilities matter, but that an understanding of specific change management practices is also important. In this regard, Harold and his colleagues point to the need to consider the change practitioner literature. In particular, they refer to Cotter's eight steps, which they argue can be linked to one or more dimensions of transformational leadership. Others, such as McKnight, agree by pointing out that punctuated change, as opposed to continuous change, requires both an emphasis upon change skills, such as a formal methodical strategy to create the necessary stages of change implementation and management, and transformational characteristics, such as the ability to coagulate their vision with a strategic plan for design and implementation. Cotter's eight steps have become a widely accepted change practitioner model with strong ties to transformational leadership concepts. Cotter argues that change leaders make eight mistakes when engaging in change initiatives and therefore eight steps are required to remedy these mistakes. Cotter's eight steps are as follows. Establish a sense of urgency. Create a guiding coalition. Develop a vision and a strategy. Communicate the change vision. Empower followers through broad-based action. Generate short-term wins. Consolidate gains and produce more change. And embed new approaches in the culture. Creating a sense of urgency is critical because if people are complacent, then they are unlikely to see the need to focus on the problem as other matters are competing for their attention. Similarly, key individuals who the leader needs to back the change may also share this view and will be unwilling to divert their time towards the change effort. Urgency can be created by showing people evidence of what continued complacency will produce. This may entail financial projections foretelling bankruptcy, poor customer feedback, revealing unethical or even illegal activity. Large-scale change in large organisations cannot be successfully undertaken by a single individual, even the CEO, since they do not have a line of sight into every area of the organisation, nor the ability to be everywhere at once. Like-minded and committed individuals are required across the organisation. Cotter notes that the coalition should comprise of individuals who collectively possess the following attributes. Positional power. Are enough people on board so that those outside cannot use positional power to block progress? Expertise. Do we have a diverse enough group with an understanding of all of the facets of the problem? Credibility. Are there enough people with strong reputations on board so that communications from the coalition will be taken seriously? Leadership. Are there enough proven and respected leaders on board to drive the change across the organisation? In order to motivate people towards the future, a specific form of vision is required. It needs to convey a picture of what the future will look like, be appealing to the long-term interests of followers, have realistic goals, be clear enough to provide guidance with decision-making, be general enough to provide broad guidance in ambiguous situations, and be easy to communicate. The vision needs to be communicated through commonly understood language using metaphors and stories where possible. It needs to be delivered in every forum throughout the organisation and repeated as often as possible and at least until the message is understood. The guiding coalition needs to be seen to be implementing and representing the change, not just talking about it, and any inconsistencies need to be explained. 
In the critical step of empowering followers through broad-based action, practical measures are the order of the day. Structural barriers, which do not align to the vision, such as policies, procedures and practices, must be removed and replaced by ones that are aligned to the vision. Speed is the key here, since old ways need to be undone as quickly as possible. If new ways are not understood, then training also needs to take place quickly. Finally, those who refuse to engage in these changes speedily must be confronted and or removed. Large-scale change is usually not a short-term process and requires immense effort throughout the organisation. As such, exhaustion and fatigue can plague change processes. Leaders need to identify and celebrate success to provide evidence that follower commitment to the change is succeeding and that they are the reason this is the case. There needs to be visible rewards for these accomplishments. Communication of successes along the way undermines those opposed to the change, shows everyone that the change is on track, and builds further momentum. While celebrating short-term wins, the end goal must never be lost sight of, since resistance and complacency is always waiting to reassert themselves. The credibility gained by short-term wins needs to be put to work by tackling additional challenges and bigger aspects of the change problem, bringing in additional people to help with the changes, and maintaining clarity and urgency surrounding the change purpose. Followers also need to be empowered to identify further opportunities to reduce or eliminate old systems and practices that are no longer required. New ways of operating need to become the cultural norm. As Shine notes, culture is a pattern of shared basic assumptions which have proved successful enough to warrant being transmitted to newcomers. And hence Cotter's statement that embedding the change into culture comes after success and acknowledgement of that success by the majority of those within the organisation. Success must be proven and communicated well. Future hires of CEOs, down to frontline staff, need to ensure a cultural fit with the new culture to ensure its survival into the future. In summary, change leadership in cases of large-scale, punctuated change initiatives is enhanced by transformational leaders who also have an understanding of the technical requirements identified in the change practitioner literature.